Well, good morning. Again, good seeing everyone here. Um, and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Um, I'm on the wrong page. That's why I don't see anything. Um, uh, so, as, as it sounds like most of you got a text message um, about uh, Bob Holds Apple. So, it sounds like I believe he fell last Sunday, sometime later. And uh, my understanding is they didn't go into the hospital till later. And after you fall, you usually don't feel well anyway. But I guess he, his pain didn't go away. So, um, so they, they, they went and took him to the doctors, figure out what happened. What they do know is back is broken. On, on Thursday, they didn't know the best way uh, to make him well. So they still want to do more tests. And, and, and of course, as you know, usually they're waiting for the doctors to be done with other people, which it could be um, a number of days uh, before <laughs> Bob gets his turn as he's uh, waiting at the hospital. So um, uh, they're thinking he, they can put him back together. They just want to make sure they put him back together right the first time. So they're thinking probably putting some screws um, in, in his spine. Um, as a, I think it's usually fusion. It's usually what they try to do for fixing, but they said that's not going to work in this case. So anyways, so... Uh, We'll keep them in our prayers for today. Um, any other announcements before we get going? Um, uh, uh, the opening song, as you may or may not have realized, uh, we also have it on the insert today, but it's also to the tune of, of one of the uh, communion songs. Uh, we did it last year. I, th- I think it went okay. Uh, so, uh, but nonetheless, the words are also on the screen. Uh, So let's go ahead and stand and and, uh, sing the song for all the faithful women in, in light of Mother's Day.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our hope is in the name of the Lord. You made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves by our sinful condition. <coughs> Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, as your only begun Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, ascended into the heavens, so may we, so may we also ascend in heart and mind, and continually dwell there with him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the first reading. The first reading comes to us from the book of Acts, the first chapter. In my former book, O Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day was taken up to heaven. When he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions to through the Holy Spirit, to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them 
over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will also be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you going Are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has sent by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes to you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking up intently into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading comes to us from the epistle of Ephesians, the first chapter. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in all my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably greater power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fulfills everything in every way. This is the word of the Lord. Let us rise for the Alleluia. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repents and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. 
when he had led them out, of, out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let's confess our Christian faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come with glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and a look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we sing this exciting song of To God Be the Glory.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, man. Into a spider web or something. Now, have you ever had a moment where you completed something and then was left thinking, now what? Maybe it was just finishing some big project. Maybe it was your family visiting who has now gone home for, from vacation. Maybe it was when you finally completed all your schooling. Maybe it was when you retired from work. Whatever it was, you had a routine down for so long that doing something else just seemed unimaginable. And the ministry of Jesus Christ had seemed to come to a particular point. Jesus is alive. Death has been conquered. He has shown himself to hundreds of people. And Jesus has overcome the impossible. So now what? Jesus had his 12 disciples under his wing for 12 years, I mean for three years, and he continued to reveal himself and bless the community each and every day. Well, the book of Acts tells us Jesus continued to speak about the kingdom of God. Jesus spoke not about how the nation of Israel ought to be a great nation like it once was, like it was under King David or King Solomon. But rather, he was talking about God ruling in the hearts of the people, preaching the repentance and forgiveness of sins. It's not a kingdom with physical boundaries, but a kingdom that consists of God's believing people, wherever they are at. And Jesus says in the Gospel of Luke that this proclamation will begin in Jerusalem. And then will be spread throughout the whole world. It will be given to all nations. And Jesus is saying that God is going to help these disciples by giving them the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said in the book of Acts that they will have to wait for the Holy Spirit to arrive first before they go. After all, the Jewish celebration of Pentecost is just around the corner. Now, as what you may be thinking, much of what Jesus had told them is nothing new. And truth be told, this work Jesus was asking the disciples to do is pretty much the same work Jesus was asking them to do in the first place. But still, as the disciples are taking all this in, they ask Jesus, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? The disciples were still waiting for Jesus to claim his position as king. Like how King David and King Solomon had done. Where these kings were just doing what God told them to do. To make the nation of Israel a great theocracy. Isn't this what God promised the Christ would do? Cleanse the promised land, Jesus. Get rid of the heathens and take up your throne. But Jesus was not interested in restoring a theocracy nation. A nation of the promised land under God's Old Testament rule. Rather, Jesus was interested in building up the kingdom of God. Jesus had already transferred the leadership of the people from the Old Testament kingdom based upon the 12 tribes of Israel to the New Testament kingdom based upon the leadership of the 12 apostles. 
this new kingdom and this new team was to continue doing the work of preaching the forgiveness of sins and having the people live with their faith and Jesus Christ. Now, I'm sure the disciples were amazed by what Jesus had said. Because when you read the next several chapters in the book of Acts, they were just amazed just how far the good news of Jesus Christ could go. They were seeing people blessed by this news more than they ever thought was imaginable. But in our text for today, Jesus did another thing that was unimaginable. Jesus ascended into heaven. Than whom they've been spending quality time with together was just lifted up as he blessed the disciples. And then Jesus continued going into the sky. Jesus took not his earthly throne, but a heavenly one. And the two angels said, yes, Jesus was taken to heaven. But there will also be a time when Jesus will come back. And I can imagine the disciples are thinking, now what? Well, the disciples realize that they will have to do what Jesus had told them to do. To go back to Jerusalem and wait. Now, with today being Mother's Day, I have to wonder what the mother of Jesus, what Mary was thinking. She had seen a whole lot from her own son. And the timing of things for her as a mom was different than what a mother would typically expect. Especially for her times. God had placed a child in her womb before she was married. And she was able to see Jesus become independent as he aged into adulthood. And her son did miracles before he even began his three-year ministry. Through this time, she was able to see her son be a wonderful leader. A blessing to the community And I'm sure these things Jesus did would have given his mom much joy. Joy to see her son doing so well. But then she also had to witness some unexpected things. Especially to see her own son dying an innocent death. No parent wants to see their own child die, nor do they want to see them being treated unjustly. But then she was surprised by his rising from the grave. So now Jesus is back with them, but now he's only around for 40 days. For as we just heard, Jesus just moved away. He went to go to heaven, for it was time for him to go. Now, Jesus did say he was coming back, but of course, that is going to be some time in the future. Moms can go through a lot of experiences when raising a family. From nursing a child to disciplining and encouraging a child, and seeing a child develop their own personality and independence as they become stronger each and every day. 
but there are times when things can just feel like they are out of control and things just seem to be going the wrong way. And there are people that can make decisions that can just go against what you had hoped. Sometimes the problem can come from the children. While Jesus was a perfect son, Jesus also had brothers. And Mary had raised several children. And again, when you have people, you're going to have problems. And while sometimes the children can be the ones that create their problem, that just want to do their own thing, I'm sure Mary had moments when she wished she would have done a better job herself. I mean, the scriptures tell us that at one time, Mary was worried about Jesus when he was accidentally left and found at Jerusalem. But still, God chose Mary to be his mother. A repentant sinner to be the mother of God. And she continued to be faithful in her work as a mother. Even when life took turns that were beyond her control, she continued to remain faithful and let God bless her through the journey. Making mistakes are a part of the human condition. They are inevitable. But living as a repentant sinner, recognizing that it's not our job to be perfect, but to point to the one who is. And learn from the one who is. Doing this will not only make the hearts of moms well, but it also make well the people around them. There are all kinds of things a mother could have wished she had done better at doing. But the gospel of Jesus Christ is for moms as well. That through Jesus Christ, you moms are also forgiven. Forgiven for the mistakes you have made. So if there's any mistakes you have made as a parent that have been burdening burdening your heart over time. If there's any reason you feel like you're a failure, let the words of God minister to your heart. You are forgiven, and God loves you. The perfect one is Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins so that we can be seen as forgiven through the eyes of God. And when judgment day comes for all of us people, God will look at us as God sees Jesus. That is perfect. Because of the faith Jesus because of the faith in Jesus that God has given us, God will see you as fearfully and wonderfully made. And so, moms, whatever stage of motherhood that you are at, whether you have kids or you're working with an empty nest, live your life in the comfort of the joy of the gospel. Lifting up your hands, blessing God, knowing that he loves you and has an eternal and amazing home for you and your loved ones. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we will now collect our offering.
Thank you for watching over me All of the sleepless nights you lay awake Thank you for knowing when to hold me close When to let me go Thank you for every stepping stone And for the path that always leads me home Thank you for the time you took To see the heart inside of me You gave me the rules to start this life And then you gave me wings to fly And I learned to dream because you believed in me There's no power like it on this earth No treasure equal to its worth The gift of a mother's Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have gathered us again before your presence. Grant that we may dwell in your house all the days of our lives and gaze upon your beauty manifested here in your word and sacrament. Graciously receive us as we inquire in your temple. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, as you have sent your Son into the world, and he has sent his apostles, so now also send your ministers, that the world may know your name, and that salvation comes from your promises. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty Father, through your Son, you gave your word to your children on earth. Guard and strengthen those who are hated by the world because they are not of the world, that not one of your people would become lost. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of all nations, since it is your will that we pray for all who are in authority, we believe with confidence that you hear our prayers for our President, Governor, Congress, legislator, and judges. Teach them the testimony of the truth, that they may be wise and effective in their offices. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Eternal Father, you have testified that eternal life is given in your Son, and that whoever has him has eternal life. You promise that you will also hear whatever we ask according to your will. So today we ask that you comfort and help the sick and the distressed. Lord, we pray that you make Bob hold Apple well and those who we now name silently in our hearts. Lord, 
Lord, we ask that you heal them and give life to all those who hold on to your Son and their faithful hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, your Son in his incarnation took our human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. He submitted to his mother, honoring and obeying her, so fulfilling the commandment where we ought have not, where we have not. On this Mother's Day, graciously accept our thanksgiving for our mothers, whom you have given to us. Teach us to honor them, loving, obeying, and giving thanks for them as it is fitting in your sight. Comfort all women who long to have children but cannot, that they may find their consolation in you and your unfailing love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, Father, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you've had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Having revealed your glory in the face of your only begotten Son, who suffered, died, and rose for our salvation, you have exalted him to the highest majesty at your right hand, that he might graciously fulfill all things. Grant us faithfully to eat and drink this Holy Supper, trusting our reigning Savior, Jesus, who, though unseen in his ascended glory, is here present to save by his body and blood. Hear us, we pray in his name, and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. 
This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Let us pray. O Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that, for his sake, you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We sing with the final hymn, Alleluia, sing to Jesus. <laughs>